When I was growing up, absolutely every RPG fanatic knew about the Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Secret of Mana, and Breath of Fire series. However, one RPG series that emerged during the same time frame was greatly overlooked, and lurked mostly in the shadows. Lunar The Silver Star Story was developed by Game Arts, a small Japanese developer, in 1992. One of the reasons the game may have failed to catch on very well was that it was originally released on the Sega CD, a platform that was mostly unsuccessful, especially when it came to RPGs. Nevertheless, the title still attracted a small but devoted following that greatly appreciated it. Compared to many RPGs of its time, Lunar the Silver Star Story had an optimistic feel, which contrasted greatly with many of its darker counterparts like Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger. That isn't to say there isn't any dark moments. There are, but they're overshadowed by a more uplifting motif. The story follows the main protagonist, Alex, in his quest to become a Dragon Master like his hero, the great Dragon Master Dain. It takes place on Lunar, also known as the Silver Star, which orbits a barren planet called the Blue Star. The goddess Althena relocated humanity to the current world after a series of destructive wars on the previous one. To become a Dragon Master, Alex must pass a series of trials created by ancient dragons to prove his dedication. However, his earnest pursuit is quickly challenged by the ambitions of Galleon, a dark magician who seeks ultimate power. Interestingly enough, Game Arts added two additional antagonists, Royce and Facia, to the PlayStation version of the game because they felt the original could only benefit from more adversaries. Lunar the Silver Star story is also filled with anime-style cutscenes that develop the underlying story. They were well done, but won't blow you away like the full motion video you'd find in Final Fantasy VII or anything like that. These are adaptations from the Sega CD version, but they're definitely a great bonus. Another item of note I want to bring up is that the game's script is truly momentous. After nearly every storyline event, revisiting towns and previous locations will yield different texts from nearly every NPC in the game, which was really novel. I can't imagine how much time was spent translating this game and adding all the extra content. According to one account, the game's English script amounted to 4 megabytes in size, a total mammoth and it's easy to see why this added so much to its appeal. For combat, the game uses a somewhat innovative battle system based on range and distance. Battles play out in turn-based fashion, but playable characters and enemies both move on a plane side by side, so spacing is a factor that always needs to be accounted for. Some attacks, skills, and spells have minimum distance requirements, so you always have to plan accordingly. Like most games, it's wisest to place high defense characters like Alex and Kyle toward the front, whereas magic users like Jessica, Mia, and Nash should generally stay back. Like most RPGs, characters also have spells and special attacks they can use, all of which consume magic points. Some spells affect a single enemy, but others can affect multiple. The sprites in battle are beautiful, and even though the animations aren't super smooth, they're well done overall and add to the game's lore. One thing I can't leave out of this video also is how incredible Working Design's packaging for the game was. The PlayStation version came with a hardbound instruction manual, quality made cloth map, game soundtrack, and a making of documentary in addition to the actual game. The game's box was big, glossy, and just a sight to behold. In every way, it really shows the level of dedication Working Design's had for its fans. You could tell they were a rare breed of developers that were actually fans of the games they localized. Also, if you happen to pre-order the game like I did, you got this incredibly unique Galleon Punching Puppet. I still have mine today, and it was just a great keepsake that always stands out on the shelf of any gamer. And while we're on the topic of Galleon, I think he's a great antagonist in general. There's a lot of depth to him in comparison to villains in other games, and a lot of his arc is also explored to an even greater extent in the game's sequel, Lunar Eternal Blue. The game's soundtrack is totally memorable too, and shines as one of the best aspects of the title. Most of the tracks have a light-hearted tone and are filled with uplifting melodies. One of the best is Toward the Horizon, which works perfectly with the epic background. Another tune for the town of Berg, the starting point in the game, 
gives a similar impression and is equally memorable. In contrast to these, Galleon's Magic Emperor theme has a darker and more imposing feel. Stand Up To Destiny is another unforgettable fast-paced track that captures a dramatic moment. There's even a vocalized track called Wind Nocturne, also known as Luna's Song, that was handled extremely well. Everyone that played Lunar the Silver Star story back then is sure to remember this one. Overall, the game's score stands out as one of the best for an RPG on the PlayStation. The publishers also put great effort into the voice acting too, which added a lot of depth that couldn't be found in other RPGs of the era. This isn't the kind of voice acting you'll find in every subpar dub of anime or anything like that either. It involves professional voice actors that you can tell have passion for their characters. Regardless of all my praise, I do have a few minor criticisms of the game though. First off, it's a bit short for an RPG. A first playthrough will probably take you around 17 to 20 hours, and that's even taking account for some of the grinding time. This will seem like a bit short to what players may be used to, but if it doesn't bother you, great. Also, I believe the game lacks the difficulty level of some of its counterparts. That said, it's probably a good introductory RPG. Between the Sega CD and PlayStation versions, the latter is definitely superior, but both still hold up pretty well. What's even more is that the game was remade a third time in 2009 as Lunar Harmony of Silver Star for the PSP. Mechanically, that version is probably the most polished and has better battle animations, but I don't like the graphical style quite as much. That version does have a playable prologue involving Dragon Master Dine though, which was definitely a nice bonus for those that enjoyed the lore. When it comes to must-play RPGs for its time, I can't recommend Lunar the Silver Star Story more. It has almost everything a fan would want. Great memorable characters, an interesting story, a fun battle system, and a fantastic soundtrack. Its localization also completely stands out above just about everything else that can be found in the 1990s, and the game ultimately stands the test of time. It's just such a shame that it was initially released on a system that had little staying power and exposure to the RPG fanbase, but it still stood out despite all the factors working against it. It was a great first entry in the two-part series, which was continued in Lunar Eternal Blue a few years later. If you like this review and remember Lunar the Silver Star story, leave a comment below about the most memorable aspect of the game to you. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell below to be alerted upon the addition of new ones. Also, please consider supporting my channel via YouTube's Join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.